Hello, welcome to Holy Spirit 30. Guess what? It's 20 days already. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and God has helped us thus far. Um, please keep the testimonies and the feedback coming in. It's a blessing to us hearing from you. Um, once again, you'd let us know where you're watching this from. It'll be, it'll be nice to know. Um, as well, very important is please let's have your questions there in the comment section. And um, some of them will be addressed right there in the comment section. And for some that I feel like... Um, I mean, maybe I feel like people need, a lot of people need answers to do. We might just do a video for this as well. Welcome to Holy Spirit 30. Um, our goal here is edification. Our goal here is transformation. It's a total immersion in the word of God. And yesterday I started speaking about how that the Holy Spirit has a burden for souls. Um Jesus Christ was raised for souls. That's the reason G the Lord Jesus was born. That's the reason he did all that he did. That's the reason he died. So that souls might be saved. People delivered from the power of darkness. And then they become all that. Uh, and they are raised, pardon me, into life. That's the reason why the whole thing is done. And I said to you that the Holy Spirit, if we genuinely really fellowship with him, um, he, what he wants to do in your life is to make you a soul winner. He wants to make Make you a soul winner and i said he does that by three things number one he grants you a burden for the lost number two a vision and i started speaking about a vision there but i want to speak about it a bit um, more extensively here you know when jesus met peter and he said cast your net to the right side of the ship after a long night of drought and no catch and all the rest if you remember um, what the Bible tells us that right after that, Peter left everything and then followed Jesus. And Jesus made a statement. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Um, the Holy Spirit has become to us who Jesus was to the disciples. Everything that Jesus was to the disciples, the Holy Spirit today is to us. The Greek word there is Allos Paracletos, another comforter, exactly like me. I'm sending him to you. And so whatever he, Jesus did with the disciples, then the Holy Spirit will do with us today. And so the Holy Spirit wants us to become fishers of men. But there's something powerful there. The kind of catch they got was net breaking, boat sinking catch of fish. It wasn't just um, hook line and then a little um, bait there. And then maybe after six hours, they got a catch there. No, 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 no. I want you to see the picture that Jesus wanted Peter to have before he stepped into this assignment. It was going to be a net breaking boat catch of fish. So let's put it this way. Follow me. And in the same way, you caught this many fish, this um, much uncountable, this much fish here. The same way you caught this huge net breaking boat sinking catch um, um, is the same way I will make you a fisher of men. So I want you to see the picture. It wasn't, oh, I got one soul saved um, January 12th, 2021. And then the next soul that's getting saved is um, September 14, 2024. No, net breaking boat sinking, catch of fish. That's the life that the Holy Spirit wants to build out of you, which means your life is productive in the gospel. Let me say this to us. We have failed completely as ministers if we raise people who do everything well but win souls. We have failed completely as believers, as individual Christians, if we do everything well, get all the blessings and benefits of the kingdom, and we are not soul winners. I want to say it again, and I'm saying this emphatically. We have failed completely as ministers of the gospel if we raise a people who are not soul winners, which means we can succeed at everything else. But if we fail at this, then we have failed at the most important thing. And we have failed as individual believers as well. If we get all the blessings, the increases of the kingdom of God, and we are not soul winners. So I want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a burden for souls. And so he rolls that burden on you, and then he gives you a vision. In John chapter 4, I, I want you to see something here. And verse 34, this is after Jesus. You remember the story of Jesus with the woman of Samaria and the disciples had gone to buy him food because he was hungry. By the time they came back, they were wondering, um, 
in verse 31. It says, In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. This is my meat. This is what excite, excites me. This is my fulfillment. This is my satisfaction. That's the same thing the Holy Spirit wants to do in you. That your greatest satisfaction will be seeing people come out of darkness into spiritual light. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And then look at what it says. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Has any man brought him food to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now look at what it says. Say not ye, there are yet four months, then come at harvest. Remember yesterday I told you the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. It says, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look on the field, for they are white or ready to harvest. So the Holy Spirit will help you. Please note this here. It said, lift up your eyes. Now, lift up your eyes does not mean look up. No. Lift up your eyes, when it's used in scriptures, is referring to change what you have been looking at. So God said to Abraham, he said, lift up your eyes now as the stars of heaven. Change what you have been looking at. So he's not saying um, increase the angulation. No, you can lift up and see your roof. You can lift up and see whatever you want to see. So when he says lift up your eyes there, he's saying change what you have been looking at. So the Holy Spirit will help you change what you have been looking at. What I have been looking at is the best cars, the best houses, the best this, the best that, a better this. And there's nothing illegitimate about those things. But as you work and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, what it will help you do is to lift up your eyes and then begin to see the possibilities. You're driving down the street of your estate. You're in that commuter bus. You're in that Uber or whatever it is. And then you can begin to see the possibilities, the number of people that can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Here's the interesting thing. Burden will lead you to prayer. Prayer will lead you to vision. Vision, it's a cycle. Vision will lead you to prayer. It will create a stronger burden and that burden becomes stronger and stronger in your heart. The third thing that I said that the Holy Spirit will do, burden, vision, is to empower you. You see, there can be no salvation, no convicting power without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. Our message will be empty and powerless with no effect, no influence on the lives of the people, save that it is empowered by the Spirit. Remember um, what Jesus said. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. And then in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says that you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses so jesus immediately connects power with being witnesses so power is not for our life change now can power produce life change yes power is not to kill your enemies is not to punish those you don't like can power put your enemies underneath you oh yes power is not to improve your life can power improve your life yes But what is the primary reason for the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus shows us? That we may be witnesses. So here's the thing, and listen very carefully to me. There are many people who are believing for the power of God, but they are not believing for it so that they can be witnesses. They are believing for it. They are pressing in for it, hoping that they'll be empowered so that they can be a big man of God, so that they can live a better life, so they can have this, they can have that. But why did Jesus say you'll be empowered by the Holy Spirit? To be a witness. So mark what I want to say here. Power without witness is a, is a waste. In essence, the essence, the primary essence of power is so that we might be witnesses. Now, tongues, speaking in other tongues, is the evidence of the Holy Spirit in filling us. It's not necessarily the evidence of power because you need to tarry and then you become endued there. But then the essence, why did he fill us with the Holy Spirit? Why are we, pen- I mean, many of you here probably are Pentecostals. Some of you are charismatics, tongue-talking people. What was the reason? When these men in Acts, the second chapter, were speaking in other tongues, what do you think they were speaking in tongues about? Was it a denomination? Was it a move? Was it, um, you know, and I see people, tongues have become chants, they become this, they become that. And I have absolutely no problem with all of that. But all of these things, without producing the um, the ability to witness the gospel of Jesus Christ, is a failed project. The reason we speak in tongues is not so as that we may have goosebumps. 
The reason we speak in tongues is not so that we can belong effectively to a denomination. It's so that we can carry the power of the Spirit to witness to our generation. And these, hear this, when Paul Peter was speaking, he said, this promise is to you and to your children afar off, as in Acts the second chapter. This promise is to you and your children afar off. And so this was not just a matter of, the promise was not to the apostles alone, to you and to your children afar off. So whether you're a doctor, you're an engineer, whatever it is, the promise is this, that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you then become a witness. So what is the essence of your tongues? What is the essence of your falling under the power? What is the essence of your chants? What is the essence of the shaking and the laughing? What is the essence of all the, 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 the charismata? What is the essence of all of it if it does not make of you a witness? The ultimate goal of the Spirit of God is to make us a witness. Don't forget, there are men in places that don't have technology who receive the Holy Spirit. There are men in places who have technology who receive the Holy Spirit. They're educated who will receive the Holy Spirit. They are illiterate who will receive the Holy Spirit. In essence, the Holy Spirit can't be about making you a good doctor. I need you to understand that. Because some people are not educated. There has to be a generic reason why he came into our lives. Whether we're educated or not, whether we're black or, or, or not, whether we're white or not, whether we're, 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 we're tall or not, whether we're short or not, what is that generic reason why the Holy Spirit has come into our lives? To make of you a witness. That's why he has come into your life. And so he empowers us primarily to be a witness. Now here is the converse, the, other, the flip side to that thought that's extremely important. The more of a witness you are, the more power is available to your life. Which means if I need, if I want to see more of God's power demonstrated in my life, in my personal life, then I need to give attention to being a witness. You see, here's the principle. The husbandman is the first partaker of the fruits. Now, so if I'm the husbandman, if I'm using power for the right purposes, if I'm in my pursuit of God and everything, for the right purposes to be a witness, then I become the first partaker as well. So you'll find out if there's a need in my life, there's power available for the needs to be met. So a lot of times people are believing God for power because they want their needs met, they want healing, they want this and they want that. I have found out that many times soul winners don't have to believe for those things. You know why? Because the husbandman must be the first partaker. If I carry power for witness and I use it for witness, then the power of God is available for every other need in my life. Are you following what I'm saying here? And so whoever you are, wherever we are, we have to desire that enabling power of the Holy Spirit, that power of the Holy Spirit that makes of us effective witnesses. We have to tarry, spend time in prayer. You have to be burdened that you speak to someone and they don't respond to the message of the gospel. You have to wait on the Lord for everyone in your workplace, in that office, on your street, around you. Believe God to empower you so that you can carry that message to them. Now somebody says, when I receive power, then I will witness. No, a million times no. I have found out that you have to keep the word on your lips. You have to be on the go, on the go. And then, you see, God is, because God is not going to empower someone who is not doing anything. So you have to be on the go with the message, believing for greater grace, believing for an empowerment of the Holy Spirit, believing God for more. Now, my strong and big desire and prayer for us is that you will not succeed at everything and then fail at this. That's my prayer for you. My prayer for you is that you will succeed at everything and succeed much more in this. Here's today's big, bold fact. If we fail at soul winning, we have failed at everything. It's a bold, big fact, but it's the truth nonetheless. If we fail at soul winning, irrespective of what we succeed at, we have failed at everything else. God bless you and welcome again to Holy Spirit 30, 30 days of edification, 30 days 
of transformation by the word of God. Please make sure you share this video. And I'm going to be with you again here tomorrow at this same time with another wonderful teaching. God bless you.